what I want people to remember me as is just solidifying my like role in the team, like that I'm a good player. Like I, you can't really see like in-game stuff or like out-of-game talks, but uh, I do kind of like push a lot in those aspects, and I hope that just by doing that, I can help my team make it farther forward. And I think just based on like results, like if we can make it to semis, then it's like. You can't just like knock me off. Be like, yeah, you know, sneaky, just getting carried. Like, you can't get carried for five years in a row. <laughs> so, I hope I can uh, make it past just to prove the point that I'm a very solid player. Well, we've always got him consistent. He is a tough opponent today, but sneaky, looking all right for that resume. Yeah, and this is going to be a chance for him to war win more quarterfinal games than he ever has in any of his past appearances. 2013, they lose two to one to Fnatic. They lose three to one to Samsung Blue in 2014. They lose three to zero to Samsung last year. And to Siki, this is absolutely a time to prove himself. Again, the last North American team alive at the World Championship that C9 consistently does. The semifinal appearance, though, is really something no one can argue with. And to me, this game is all about where this series goes. I think this will be the predictive game, because there's two schools of thought. There's the question of, hey, they showed the Sims, they showed the Aurelian Soul, how many more do they have? I think we just saw Misfit's answer, that you can't necessarily have a, a small bag of tricks, you can have a really big one and potentially take down a series. That way, WE also doesn't need to stop opting in, doesn't need to keep opting into these very scaling bot lanes. They don't need to always go for the Cogmore strategy. They're choosing to do that so far, and that's why I feel like this next draft, we've seen one win both sides. To me, this will set the tone for the rest of the series. Exactly, because Zaya, a champion that has been banned almost all the quarterfinals, completely sipped through the pick and ban phase in favor of that Kog'Maw pick last time, and that made their damage type almost all magic, which made it very easy for C9 to tank with their front line, as well as Ori and Jarvan Shield. So there were a lot of other things that happened in that game, like the 20 minute Baron after chasing Singe, but the core of it does kind of revolve around that Kog'Maw being such a high priority for Mystic. Certainly have to think so. It is insane to think that both of the AD carries on these teams did not opt for Zaya Sneaky, a big proponent since it released. Mystic, I'm pretty sure it was the most first big champion for WE in the LPL summer, certainly in the latter stages of it. So WE haven't diverged too much from what we expect from them, but when they have, it's been surprising, I think. And it was also about the ban that went towards the top side, really forcing the magic damage. Top laner over-indexing on magic damage. They don't need to trap themselves in the same hole again. They will, however, put themselves on blue side. So blue side focus for the majority of this week and certainly in this series. The immediate ban on Jensen's Orient. Just get it out of here. That was such a pivotal pick in the way C9 played that entire game, playing through mid lane, getting jungle control, using that to deny Condi. Just get it out of there is what Team W says. And I think they also don't want to deal with a ranged jungler on red side and a potential counter pick, say counter pick top or counter pick for mid lane. They don't want to have too many variables for them to isolate where to focus their attention. So this banning away the premier ranged jungler in the Ezreal on blue side, they also of course have the more freedom that blue side bans bring. And here C9 is put into such a difficult spot because Team WE has not opted for the Lulu ban to bait a Janna ban. They're saying, C9, if you want out of this Janna Lulu hole, you're going to have to ban both. And that's not something C9 is willing to do. Callista has been banned on red side every single game since the group stage, and Sejuani is also a very high party. But isn't that fun that game on game, we could have one game where we will have the Lulu versus Janna meta, which is the Team WE blue side game, and then instantly C9 with one ban can largely force a reactive ban, and the series can turn in such a turbulent way. Game to game is fun as the Caitlyn that we have wow. not seen from Mystic is going to be locked in first pick. And WE, they picked blue side. So all of this setup, seeing that C9 didn't ban either Lulu or Janna, really gives us this. Team WE, we've seen so many ADs first pick. It's not Trist, Zaya was banned, but this time it's Caitlyn. I'm surprised by the Caitlyn pick, but it does show Team WE's hand right away. They're all behind Mystic. They're all behind being able to win that early game. And now the question is, does C9 match with Janna? and then something like Varus or Ash, who I think are very good lanes against the Kate. And I like the fact that you mentioned Janna because it was Janna Kate, Janna Kate. It was the mm -hmm. duo where you could get through the early game, just give a bit of extra AD, get over the hump, the nurse towards Caitlyn's Q did, win the lane as a Janna lane, and then have Janna for the late game. And that's why a Janna takeaway here would at least 
arrest that particular developer. I think there was a lot of discussion there with Reaper and Sneaky in particular about what do they need to not get destroyed in that lane because that is ultimately what crutches on the Caitlyn pick because Janna is a better late game team fighter than the Lulu. But Lulu shoves the lane better than Janna early. So essentially, I feel like that conversation was with Janna plus X, can you deal with Caitlyn Lulu? Because that's exactly what Team W is going to lock in on the next side. No questions asked. And I think it'll be an extent thing because I think on paper, no. But to what degree can you at least yes. buy time? Is it the nine minute turret instead of the six minute turret? The 15 minute turret? Maybe that's already the dream given just how strong a pushing lane Caitlyn X is, but Caitlyn Lulu is certainly. And it's a very nuanced conversation because you also have to think about late game. We saw the Kog'Maw go into the Caitlyn, but we also didn't expect to see Caitlyn blind picks because there are other 80 carries you can match it with in the long run. Interesting to see a change here from Cena, and again, thinking AD, uh, even thinking maybe Nah, because again, it is open for impact, but it will be just done again. C9 will hold picking both their bot laners here. And WE haven't just completely gone for early game choices. Rumble was a common pick with these Caitlyn comps. They have gone from the Cho'Gath, maybe denying it away from C9, but them just having a blind pickable top lane. The ban phase will tell us a story. No jungler yet selected on WE's side, and Fondi's Gragas, of course, is very famous. Exactly, so they can get rid of the main tank jungler meta as well, which uh, will potentially hurt them in the late game, but if you're talking about early game tempo, there's a lot of warrior junglers that can still bring a lot of heat in the early game. Lee Sin comes to mind, Kha'Zix comes to mind. Fondi's Lee Sin also. And Rek'Sai. There's just too many to ban away all of them. And Rek'Sai at least released pressure from Jensen in a lot of matchups. We saw, of course, the Rise Rek'Sai used to great use. So the Rise hover earlier. That's gonna have to be a last yeah. pick, if anything, given that Rise outside of Korean teams definitely been struggling recently. And Impact's Shen. And I want to deal with it, that'll be the final ban for WE. That champion is not Nah, though. Mm -hmm. So Sinai want to take it now and give Jensen the counter pick. That does set them up quite well. Nah is less reliable, I would say, than the Shen in terms of how C9 wields it. And also, with a warrior jungler plus Trogath, there's kill potential on the Nah early to kind of get the top laner through what can be an awkward phase. There's also still this man. What's good top lane? Singed? What else? Only Singed. All right, there it's we the go. answer there for Impact. That's the famous Ray line from when they locked in Riven at Rift Rivals. But that is the trust that Reaper can put in his players. So both of these guys are fully on board of this Singed pick. It's into the Cho'Gath now. I think it's a much more difficult matchup. Cho'Gath can keep Singed in place with auto attack slows. And that's the least Sin we're expecting to see. It's also a potential kill lane if you can hit the rupture. Oh, this is Cho'Gath the other option. jungle? Yeah, that was the other option, right? Could be Mount Pivot jungle too. Whoa. Okay. That's not that much damage to kill Singed with in the late game. I mean, it's not much damage, period, right? The <laughs> mid laner choice here, without an Orianna, for example, who has great ball carriers, is going to be a really interesting one. It's just going to be the Corky again as a blind pick. It's very interesting. That's the whole WE have put themselves into now. I think you have to. Like, you need insurance, right? Like, you have a good front line. You need maybe a better marksman. Ooh. It is. Just forget about this one. Full early game. When they debuted this composition, it was with the J Smith. But this is also not the same circumstances as when Team WE first pulled this out. The Caitlyn, blind. C9 gets to plan for it. The Jace, blind. C9 gets to plan for it with Jensen's pick as well. And only the Syndra Oriana and Galio ban from the mid lane pool. Wave clear, safe wave clear to me is what you want. Or you can go full assassin and really start to go crazy. The wave clear round is the safer one. And also make the players around the map potentially aid the Singed and Talia is available. And pace your time. You and I have talked a lot about Jensen's Talia in particular because early on in the split, this champion did not fit Jensen's profile. He wanted to play around mid, only mid, get the turret, win the game but he has since evolved a little bit into roaming more and playing around the bottom side. And traditionally, his Talia has been great in laning phase, bad post laning phase. That's the transition Jensen would have to make here. But mainly, if he gets out of laning phase, C9's probably feeling pretty good. Certainly do agree there, Jensen. I mean, when he played Aurelian Soul, I was like, hey, he's never played this. That's really weird style-wise. My response was going to be, his Talia's not even that good. And I mentioned it would, might be a Maokai jungle. They do settle on Maokai Jungle as the mm -hmm. champion select starts to lower. Of course, has very strong gank potential from level two. Yeah. They will go for the Cho'Gath, the better laning matchup by far against the Singed. But this jungle pick has been unreliable from the video I've seen. Yeah, so as far as jungle Maokai is concerned, he does have very reliable ganks early, Definitely. but his clear speed is where he took yep. the largest hit. So 
when Maokai was first buffed, he had a lot of base damage on his saplings. That was the main nerf for him, which pushed him almost exclusively towards the top lane role. So the early game will be very pivotal right here, whether or not Connie can get those first few kills, because he can't get a huge amount of gold just by hard farming the jungle. And you worry, because Maokai kind of needs to make the practice move, otherwise we still will have Singe. Laoji being able to run away. The pressure drafts from C9 have been consistent. They're going to try and make the same play style again. Yep, kind of sitting. A little on the other side, actually. I mean, as far as early playmaking goes, early aggression goes, have to favor WE given how Definitely. they pick C9 now. They're forced back a little late, and their biggest strengths have been early game, and one of their weaknesses has been mid game. So you have to navigate a tough early game and then play someone where you know you're not as strong. Yeah, it's a good point. They have mid lane priority still with the Talia early, and they have the Jarvan who's happy to invade into a Maokai. But the side lanes are more unreliable, especially bot lane, which should be very much WE focused. Ignite from Shea. Yep, he's in there. Oh. Everything is in that early game pressure. The flash twisted advance from Condi will be the gank of choice uh, against what is a cleanse Jensen and a singe top. And that's why I'm interested to see, does Contrax's job change from being the primary early game ganker, the invading jungler into maybe a bit more like we see from Blank, fighting for vision around mid, because I think in double control with, Control Ward, both sides of mid lane. It relieves so much pressure from Jensen when it comes to those Twisted Advance engages. All right, now Impact and 957 just hanging out. 957 got a couple bits of damage with the Vorpal Spikes as Condi lines up his first few saplings. Looks like both junglers will be starting on the same side. And again, maybe trending towards that bottom lane as well. We haven't seen Contracts really play around his bottom lane at all. So we'll see if the shift in focus for either jungler becomes apparent in this game. I really want to see Condi's early jungling and how much he's practiced the sapling stack on Maokai. He needs to be able to get all three of them to bounce separately for the best possible pull. Uh, checking back, he actually has. You can see that was the final sapling, but Impact actually trolls it away, which will slow down Condi's jungle path. That's pretty substantial actually because it delays him by about six seconds or so. And I want you to notice that there were no deep wards from WE to spot contracts. There was a blue ping. They're expecting it to be a red side start because C9 got to bot lane very fast, but they don't have much information and you can be so much more creative early with the Jarvan compared to the Mal. And contracts maybe thinking buff to buff. So does have a ward as well, so I think just gonna check and see what Condi is up to. In fact, disrupt these. If he can steal them away, it's pretty big. Sapling won't kill, but he can steal them after. Looking for one, gets one only. There's two. Played a lot of Maokai jungle. I know the damage is <laughs> on the Raptor camps. Uh, it's very slow, but that is exactly how you want to play it. The saplings do much more damage when thrown in a brush, and then do a dot over time. So it's actually pretty easy to steal them as well because you see the burst, and then you know it's going to tick out. And it's also the right timing. Talia had pushed in Jace. Jace couldn't leave. One of the small times they'll have their lanes in the right spot, given that top and bot lane should go better for WE relatively than other times. They get the little contest. They back away. Low risk, high reward. Yep, Ward as well also will likely protect Jen. And so the aggression that maybe we expected from Condi, a potential level two gank is at least scouted out for now. But again, Condi staying on those crugs, maybe towards that bot side as Contracts is clearing the rest of his jungle. And this is not the same matchup as Singe versus Cho as Maokai in the top lane. The Cho'Gath has much more kill pressure and is much more threatening, especially when combined with the lockdown of the Maokai early in the game. I'll be very curious to see if Impact goes Spectre's Calves his first item instead of Haunting Guys, thanks to the increased Yeah, that was the point I was going to get to, is I don't know how Mario he is to the Leandri's rush build that did find a lot of success in game one. Is They're well, going in. contract is here. He's flashed flashed already flip. flashed. Yep. Oh, doesn't missed quite it. connect with the slow might still be good enough. Damage is there. Impact in a tank one. Throw it here. Make it two. Oh my god, that rupture Dead. was amazing. First blood. Nine five seven. Big turnaround there. Gets the kill. Contracts can only walk away in disgust. Mid lane. Remember ignite on Chia. Getting aggressive. Jensen with his summoners as the sapling doesn't quite tag him. That. Gank needed to be called off by C9 the instant the flash didn't connect from contracts, but they decided to stay with it. The rupture came back off cooldown, and 957 just caught him back in turret range. And of course, with top and mid fighting, but also has the go signal there as the aggression starts. In fact, Condi could potentially die. This wave should push in. Yeah, knows all the tricks, able to pull the Gromp into the brush as well to get the extra damage on the saplings. Barrier heal also down from Sneaky makes this gank uh, threatening if they decide to go for it. I just flash up as well, so good flash over if they see an opening. Don't see one yet. Oh, Sneaky, we're going in. in. Very aggressive, actually trying to take down Ben, but Condi 
Doesn't quite go for the dive, the wave not there, Sneaky contesting. He couldn't know, but that actually bought the Blasting Plant jump there from the Maokai not knowing what was going on. It was so uncharacteristic given the setup we saw. He'll return all the way around though, Condi. Still here. He's gone though. Yeah, again, c have done a good job aggressively defending. Alright, here they come. Level 4 just pinged by Condi. Not in vision yet. Sneaky hit 4 as well, but Smoothie's not so lucky. Now there's Condi looking for the dive. They're going to move up for it. Polymorph hitting onto Sneaky. That's the main target. Rocket jumps over the top and Mystic. He tanked a turret. If that NATO would hit, he would be dead. It was a big mind game there. They wanted to see the NATO early. Mystic very, very low. The NATO was held onto by Smoothie, so couldn't use Twisted Advance. Condi just leaves. No kill to C9, but otherwise failed dive again. Very slim margin for error in lanes like this. Sneaky still trying to stay in lane as long as possible to not give Mystic a favorable recall. They know he's low, and they're actually trying to push the tempo on that lane. Oh, she ain't going. Yep, Ooh. he wanted it, but can't fully commit. Flashes the flare, though. And Jensen, that's him forced out of lane. Contract, a little help, but not enough. Chinese crowd loves the aggression being shown by Xie. Thought about the flash Q, had the ignite as well. Cleanse up on Jensen, cleanse away the damage portion at least, but Xie knows he has to play on the front foot. Usually, remember, he's the one who also, like 957, is just kind of enduring, playing the wave clear, buying time for Mystic. He's probably still very much going to be involved in buying time, but in this time, it's buying time with just being a pressure valve in there. Well, C9 couldn't have known that Condi left the bot lane, but actually a good recall timing here for them. Sneaky catches up a little bit in farm. Ben's going to pull the wave here. And again, make sure gold goes to Mystic. And they both got BF Sword on their own back, as well as being able to get a health potion onto Sneaky. So early laning phase-wise, that's about as well as it could have gone for C9, with their summoner spells also coming back up shortly. I basically nodded my head and said, yep, better than expected for what the lane looked like. Caitlyn Lulu and the early trades that were going very, very well. The might side be, WE. Might be the tagline for the series at this state, but you can see Mystic as Caitlyn. Two wins and a monstrous CSD at 10. And what the worrying thing would be for C9 here is actually the top lane not going to expectations for the Singe. She's pretty far behind the Cho'Gath, and you're going to have to deal with some stuff going down later, but Mystic has Flash. He's got some contracts, maybe going to try and outplay. Doesn't quite read it, but the Tornado is good. Still, damage turned back in onto Smoothie, who gets Polymorphed and is forced to flash away. Sneaky, too low to try and keep fighting. And C9 over committing on two separate ganks, nearly getting themselves in trouble, which is interesting because the early game is so heavily in the favor of Team W, it's almost like C9 is trying too hard to prevent it from happening. Yeah, Talia made the first roam. She would, be, she would have been there first, didn't use the weave as well. Now mid lane, she still has flash. Ooh, forcing a flash just from a bit of snow popped into the mid lane. Well, essentially, he needed to flash before the Singe cast his grounded effect. Otherwise, he would have been slowed enough to get hit by the seismic shove. So it's a respect flash, and it shows the threat of that gank. Grounded effects are so limited in League of Legends. Only Cassiopeia that had it with the Miasma, but giving it to Singe ended up alongside some other tweaks being a really big buff. The Singe, you don't often see Singe forcing a reactive gank the moment yeah. he exits the Fog of War. Well, certainly C9. Pretty even kill here, which is good for them. Although Ben gonna get aggressed on that heal may save his life. Very aggressive. The and the shield is get him! Sneaky gets a kill! They're gonna go for two! Mystic, no summoners left! Sneaky outplays them! Sneaky and Smoothie in lane! 2v2 Mystic and Ben! That is massive for this game! And it was in a losing matchup as well. It's so big gets some pressure bot lane and pressure now mid. Jensen v Condi. Oh, the shot barely missed! GA does take GA. that contracts and Jensen. A heartbreak to not get that kill. Flash auto is in, trying to block it out of the way. That auto was was not good as Jensen gets a shield by Jana. And it's actually the bottom lane that is holding things together for C9 because both times Contracts has gone for a kill on the solo lane, it has gone awry. Shi and 957 keeping this game even. Maokai flashed in and the auto attack went to him instead of Jace. Probably would have killed the Jace. No extra AD from Smoothie available at the time. A game of inches in the mid lane. Only big seismic lead is Sneaky and Smoothie though. That first purchase, being able to get the BF sword made this play possible. He should have been down an AD given the matchup, but he was even, and that was so big. And when we talk about Mystic, he's a great player, but he's a greedy player. And this was a greedy play by both Ben and Mystic. They weren't even close to winning this 2v2. They just didn't expect C9 to have the aggressive move just based on the assumption that Caitlyn and Lulu was unbeatable in lane. Big miscalculation. Yeah, this is the replay also, the wall over. Remember, GS Flash was used earlier. They come in here, watch how close this gets. Ignite means that contracts will go down. One auto, next auto should kill him. Doesn't in this case. And also, the missed seismic shove by Jensen, so critical. 
he was knocked up by Contract's EQ, which if he is just waiting for the EQ knockup would have made it free. Yep. But he wasn't on the same page of Contracts. He was placing the seismic shove for where Shie would have ran. Instead, he got interrupted by the knockup from Jarvan, didn't get the kill. Well, let's take a deep breath. We're 10 minutes in, and sure, top lane hasn't gone exactly as planned for C9. Remember that we entered this game with the expectations from the draft. WE are early game focused. Mm -hmm. Get that big lead, get the bot lane turret. Getting the bot lane turret looks damn hard given they lost 2v2. The turret being up at nine minutes wasn't a guarantee. It's gonna be up, it seems like, as long as C9 damn please, barring a big TP gank bottom with the scaling advantage. C9's equal in goal. And C9 might actually be going for a play here, teleporting in with impact. The question is, are they forcing too hard? Because they're committing maybe even five if Jensen comes down as well. They are more than going for a play. TP in from 957 could call it off. Jensen coming down, 957, running into Fear, it's gonna get knocked back in. Sneaky taking through the turret, but Jensen, huge shove there. Sneaky now gonna drop it off to 957, and that is isn't bad enough. Jensen barely gets the kill Monsoon from Smoothie, trying to reset the situation. Contract dunks Ben, of course it's his flash, but Condi a little too low, getting the charge down as Impact will get that one. Sneaky still low, Mystic weaving auto attacks in towards him, but they just walk away. And the slow play actually works out very well for C9 as they're able to get Jensen shoving 957 back over the wall and had five people there slightly sooner. It didn't end up being a turret dive at all. It just ended up being kind of an awkward fight in the jungle. It doesn't need to be a turret dive because they got two kills. They push in the minion wave. Talia will push in the mid lane minion wave as well. They win in more places than necessarily taking down the turret. Remember, this is off script. WE want to be making this same play around the enemy turret bot lane. It looked like an overforce, but they never yep. actually take ta turret aggro. They turn on to 957, and they almost burst them down instantly. And it looked a little dangerous as well with contracts going right into a giant Cho'Gath, but the Cho'Gath never had feast for that play as well. A beautiful ultimate by Smoothie, also forcing flashes at the end of it by contracts, and they just run down Kondu, who they already know is flashes. Two flings, two kills, because they were out of the turret. They did not tank it before they needed to. Remarkable restraint for C9, who still are doing the opposite of what you would expect. Hold on, on Jensen. Yep, oh, 1v3 right now. Condor's gonna try and save him. That's not nearly enough. Two can play the game of playing around mid lane and sending a three-man dive. That was a vintage C9 move in the regular season. Jensen, with no flash, is punished. But C9 now trying to collapse as well on the mid lane. Just think about, oh, I'll hold the point. Untent here for Triss. Tornado, not enough. Smoothie flashes in. Actually, maybe gets a little bit. Now, Condi, he's that dead. Up dead yet. No flash, no chance. Sneaky. Jungle Maokai is a low-income version of Maokai, and Condi is far behind the curve right now. His farm was somewhat disrupted in the year of the game, but unable to pick up too many kills or assists makes him very squishy right now. And one thing I want people to take away is the play WE made wins in every way if bot lane had actually been the early turret going down, because this in draft phase should not according to the calculators of WE, been sneaky and smoothy on Justana Jana, rotating mid first, actually being able to cut off Caitlyn Lulu. Caitlyn Lulu should win the way and push down the turret, force C9 under a turret basically, and then roam first. But the bot lane winning makes WE's play so much less reliable. Mystic is level seven right now. They are so far behind and also lose the scaling. First turret going down gives C9 a big early game lead. Smoothie also experience lead and a sensor lead. As oh, okay. Good, all right. Also, she <laughs> is level 11 against Jensen. This game defying expectations. Mystic flashed already, but Contract's there with a dunk. 3v3 though, but Mystic still trying to make it happen. Sneaky gets rid of Pachana. I think it's a little too much. Sneaky goes in with a rocket jump as Contract collects credit. She is roaming down from the mid lane. C9 has to get out of here and fast. Well, John and Passive gonna have to kick into high gear. She is gonna try and make one snipe happen. Sneaky, no ulti does have flash. Dodges the first shot plus. Keep running though, Condi. He's gonna try and take you down. Rocket jumps out of the way. Monster from John. Tornado. She goes down to Sneaky. Condi's gonna go down as well. And Ben, my goodness, Smoothie outplayed the hell out of that. Smoothie played so smart. Kept on to the Odin. It's reapplying Arden Sensor onto Jarvan and Tristana the entire time. Baited and outsmarted by C9. And Sneaky is having the game of his career right now. In the quarterfinals, five kills through 14 minutes. He had one kill the entire series last year in the quarterfinals. And Sneaky and Smoothie, as you mentioned, outplayed the hell out of Shie right there. Thank goodness we ran the video right before this <laughs> game. Perfectly on script. As five kills Sneaky.
barreling towards the second item. So this is what a very early Ghost Blade Rush will do. She had one rotations with all his spells and goodbye in the mid lane. But the top bot lane was where they had the similar advantage. Polymorph gets a lot of damage dropped. Remember that the Maokai yeah. basically does nothing. No damage, not that tanky, only level seven. So he's like, cool, gets the reset on yeah. his rocket jump, keeps going. <laughs> this is where most people think it would change, but watch Smoothie. Dodge the Shock Blast and then also to the skies is what Shea flashes for, but he doesn't get it because of the Tornado, the second disengage from Smoothie. Once he goes down, it's all too easy for Sneaky to finish off more. And there's the second turret about as quickly as the first C9 collect the maximum after that play. And they are 5,000 gold ahead, but this time it is through their bot lane. It is not a question you have had to ask about WE often. What do they look like when their mid laner is ahead and their bot lane is massively behind? Usually Mystic is everything they invest into. This time Xie needs to be the important carry for WE. And also, when Mystic is behind in the bottom lane, they have the scaling advantage. They've played a Twitch or a Kog'Maw, and then they can group around that. Much harder to do with the Caitlyn, who is yet to complete an Infinity Edge, when Sneaky is sitting on IE Zeal. First turret's gonna be pretty free. Rift Herald also available for Contracts, who took it. The C9 fell the outer ring at 16 minutes. This is just such a game that defies expectations. Mainly because of even the way it is distributed for C9. Based on group stage, Sneaky, lowest damage percentage of all AD carries. Contracts, highest of junglers. Mystic as well, top three in damage percentage for AD carries. Number one in damage per minute difference between him and the other AD carry. Drafted for the Caitlyn, first picked it over everything else. Throwing down the gauntlet, telling C9 that they could not win that lane. But then, not only does Sneaky and Smoothie smash that lane, you also have Jensen, the normal carrier of C9, getting solo killed by Xie, and it not mattering. c 9 still 5,000 gold up Ooh. in this game. Impact chasing down, actually, he's a pure 1v2. Two levels up. So he's able to walk in and not really worry about the not even Infinity Edge yet. Caitlyn will have to worry about the Yomu's Ghost Blade and already second lethality item completed, the Dusk Blade there for Xie. So Xie is by far the power deal. And to me, Dad, it's all about what is C9, because the identity was Jensen Focus. That was the story in NALCS. They keep reinventing themselves with new picks. Honestly, C9, and if you look at Jensen this series, he's on Rome duty. He's on yeah. helping side lane duty. Impact singed the big pick in the previous game. And it's all about the bot lane this time out. And this is why we talk about Jensen. Again, these picks aren't his style necessarily, but to win, at the highest level of competition, you need to be adaptable. C9, they've grown so much to get to this point, and now, when it matters, they are performing. Exactly, adapting to everything that's thrown at them and then trying to find the next gear. That's what they also have to do here. They had a 5,000 gold lead this early on in game one as well, and were unable to close because 957 found some great teleport plays on the Chogath. So now C9 is setting up with Rift Herald and want to break that inner wall of turrets. And having the Rift Herald actually disincentivized them from entering the enemy jungle where WE were all cooped up. They're just happy to go into a lane, plop the Rift Herald, and draw out WE. Rift Herald's big thing is the enemy has to send usually outnumbered numbers to even keep up the turret, and they're drawing WE away from their control wards and their brush cap. Well, this should be good enough here. Sneaky tanks a couple turret shots, but Rift Herald's gonna do most of the damage there. Rupture's nice under two from 957, but Jensen cheating over means the C9 do what they could not do in game one with their lead, break a tier two turret easily. Yeah, and C9 actually would be incentivized to keep the map Ooh. a little bit spread out as well. Keep killing turrets, keep shoving the waves. Impact has gone with Leandries and Merc Treads again, which would be dangerous in team fights against the Dusk Blade, Ghost Blade, Jace. Now, it does sound a bit like a rerun of our audio from game one. If you think about it, we were talking about the same thing. C9, keep up the pressure, keep up the pressure. Remember, they don't have the same clock. The scaling is yeah. not there for WE this game. There is no Cogmore, there is no Hyper Carry. It was even Ignite mid lane to get an advantage. So the clock pressure is not there. Playing around tempo, that is important League of Legends. But compared to game one, WE don't have a late game fantasy to hold on to. Well, 7,000 up now for C9, playing very disciplined through this mid game. Again, just casually sieging turrets. 
She is certainly a threat, sneaking gets a bit of aggro, but Rocket jumps away. Run away. And thundering blow under the tornado there for Condi. Now the TP's in. They have to throw everything in, but they can't get it. And WE flash out defensively. Impact looks for the flip. Fights it up to Condi. Condi flashes out of the way. 957, he wants a piece, but Misty gets knocked up by the next tornado. Very close fight there, burning multiple summoners from Sneaky. That does make it a little bit risky for C9 to stick around, but they still have the Janna ultimate, which means they can continue the push on not only the mid, but also the bot turret. And Jensen even getting chunked out wants to stop any further cutting. Only in a turret left is mid lane, and it's chunked out as well. WE with the sort of draft that needs to play from ahead hardly has access to their own jump. Just gonna take and make it 6 0 in turrets for Cloud9. This is exactly how they wanted to snowball in game one. This game, though, they have the Trist. You're not worried about that Rage Blade Kogma. Mystic is a non threat. I mean, almost everything that could go wrong for Sneaky in that fight did go wrong. He got knocked out of his rocket jump. All these other things mattered. Team W might make a desperation play. It's 20 minutes. They don't even have Infinity Edge on Mystic. It's get a Baron or really start to really park it in. It would have to be multiple fight misplays from C9 to get them out of this position. And remember a small tantalizing point. C9 has side selection once again in game four. If they win here, they can also put themselves back on the blue side that was successful for them mm. in previous games. So C9 closing out here. Just like it was with Misfits, C9 really will be in full control of a series. Certainly would be nice to break serve on the draft as C9 already done the legwork as well. WE faint to Baron. They already had a control word in and WE. That's it. That's all their offense around the Baron. C9 moved back in, put the wards down. Yes, WE own the speed shrine. But that, that vision's going to run out in about 20 seconds, and C9's yeah. next point of attack could be anything. Impact is already getting the train rolling in yeah. bot lane. And it's all about how deep can they actually get their vision, because they've broken the inner tier of turrets right there, so they need to push WE back as far as possible. Condi, you are not very tanky, my friend. No. They're hoping that Shock Blast would do a lot more. Doesn't quite catch Sneaky. Jarvan now has a chain vest and the Ninja Tabi, so he's happy to start standing in the front. If it's not hitting, Smoothie or Sneaky, it's not really getting value. They start the Baron in yeah. vision. And WE knows this is it, so Jensen actually cuts them off. What a wonderful wall by Jensen C9. Have they timed it correctly? It's a little too early. They're still going to be able to have a chance at a steal, but they back away. They give it up. What a perfect Baron take by C9 to push himself up almost 10,000 gold. The last number I got was it Sneaky was 3,800 gold ahead of Mystic. That number will now change as C9 a, a prime to end this game. Pastry time, any other world championship, we'd already be talking about game four. What is WE going to be bouncing back? But this world championship has been so full of surprises that I'm not completely sure, but it's like a 99% win here for C9. With the Baron, with the Ocean Drake coming back up, with the Tristana, you're expecting them to be able to close this one out. That's a really big number. 99% is a very high proportion. I felt really good about Fnatic in game two when they set up their second Baron. You're right, though. It is odds on for C9. No sort of shock blasts hitting, or at least delay things, but it's going to take some miracles yeah. from Shie to make something happen. You definitely lost a few percentage points with that shock blast. <laughs> One wave goes Where are we down. At now? 97? Yeah, 98 and a half. Oh, it's going down, but it's so in control of C9 right now. Certainly is. That may be one of the understatements of the series. There's impact and contracts rotating back in. C9 have a very clear goal: shove down mid, break that turret, and push themselves one step closer to winning this game. Condi caught out. A flash through the base gate. Pops the ulti, though. C9 is happy to split up the pressure. They get two-thirds of the turret on the first push. Reset for the next wave. Oh, they take him all the way in. in. All the way in. He's dead. Smoothie gets the kill somehow in and amongst the chaos. What? <laughs> this has been a terrible game for Condi. Right? He's gotten pitched down on his jungle pool. They don't give him a lease in. And we mentioned how important it was going to be for him to find success early. It just has not been. He had so many options, but went for Maokai jungle of all things. They rolled the dice and then some. I think they could have gone early game and not come. It could have been his famous Lee Sin. They went for the Maokai. It has not worked. And that inhibitor's dead. C9 just waltz on through. Jensen already prepped the next wave. Baron's still up for 10. Two minutes, sorry, his impact. Zoning away Cho'Gath as C9 take a second inhibitor. Sneaky is over 4,000 gold ahead of Mystic. Just compare the items between the carries to see how out of hand this game has become. They might look to push for the win with the Baron up wave in the mid lane. Even in a 5v5. So hard, 24 minutes in. They're going to try and end. Here comes Mystic once again. Still no IE, just a crit close. 
Yeah, you think that C9's being a little bit too greedy here. Should probably just back away and go get the third wave, but they're riding that wave of confidence right now. Maybe that Shock Blast will determine now. Sneaky again, if he can hit some minions with a shield on him, it's gonna heal up real quick. TP back in from Impact. C9 gonna try and end the game. Hard to get the waves all the way in at the right time. Ground on Impact, looks for the flip, flashes in, forces the Wild Growth, turret one dead. Yeah, super minions will be arriving soon. Sneaky taking again, Raptor, Beast, Silence! Oh my god, Impact saves his carry, but Sneaky still getting jumped up, makes his way out, Condi goes down, and the last chance saloon is closing for WE. Nexus turrets down, Baron still there, and Cloud9 do the unthinkable, do the impossible. They are one game away from winning a quarterfinal. Cloud9 against an early game comp, Blitz. Team WE in less than 25 minutes. People have looked the SKT vs C9 games for a clapping. That was a clapping by C9 and just off script completely. By C9's bottom lane as well. Three and three in the group stage against the five and one Team WE, but now up two and one in this series. Previous quarterfinals, this is the fourth time C9 has been in a world quarterfinal. Never have they won more than one game. They are all smiles right now. Well, Momentum clearly on their side. And to me, it's all about the support staff at this moment for both sides, for the side of WE. They've been in these holes before. They've come back in series before. They'll need to try and steady. They will not have side selection, remember, for the next game. But Reaper and Co. also on the side of C9 need to make sure that the team hasn't already spent this great feeling you have. We're like, we've almost done it. We're basically one foot in the door. Many teams have got their misfits, of course, felt that painfully the other day. You need to steady your troops and say, there's still a war to be won. Yeah, and when you think about the support staff and where they're gonna go in picks and bans, there is a clear, high prioritization on whatever Mystic wants to play. And the rest of the team comp seems to be secondary in that regard. So yes, they wanted the Caitlyn for that pass Pu uh, fast push strategy, but you don't think about that with the Maokai jungle and a Cho'Gath top. That was unable to apply a lot of pressure. You add that to the fact that Mystic did not perform in this game, and everything can start to crumble for Team WE. So they got to dig deep if they want to come back in this series. The only player without a huge grin on his face was Sneaky. He knows there is one more game left to play for them, but to hear more about how C9 brought this series to match point, let's send it over to Dash and the analysts. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. It's not over yet, but our first lopsided match, or rather game, of the series goes in favor of Cloud9 now at 2-1 and one over Team WE. We got to keep looking at this draft because it feels superbly relevant to the results of these games. I'm just going to call it uh, a trash draft. I really hate the Cho'Gath and the Maokai flex pick. As soon as they see the, the reveal again of like the Singe and the Jarvan, they're just like, ah, it's fine, we'll slot Maokai into the jungle. No, that is not an option here, and they frankly just got blitz for minute one. They should have just taken the Gragas right away. You had the opportunity to make your composition safe and sound, but instead they choose to say, we like the Cho for 957. I think we're going to be just fine. We're going to survive the early game like game one, live through it, and against all odds, the bottom lane of Cloud9 just obliterates. I think the, the jungler was the least of the issues this time around here. Ooh. Giving over the Janna, rushing for this Caitlyn pick, it comes back to the opening of the show that we talked about. It's a two-sided coin, innovation and adaptation. Both of these teams were the ones who got the most out of this Caitlyn pick in the group stage. But I think we're, when we're looking at the junglers, maybe not so much for the WE jungler, but I think contracts on Jarvan specifically has been huge. Three games in a row of this champion, and he has been such a critical pick for denying AD carries. Cataclysm is one of the most annoying abilities when it comes to staying alive, and you put so much pressure early game on top of that. The most Smoothie's still over <laughs> er, underrated, though. No, he's definitely not underrated. He's definitely very, very good. That was Jana Play's bottom we're discussing. The big thing for me, though, is the fact that Team WE has shown us nothing. We've already seen the Caitlyn pick come out of them earlier on. They went back to it, and they just got absolutely blasted in the bottom lane. It started out with the 2v2 from Smoothie and Sneaky, and only got worse as soon as Contracts was involved. But that's it. We've seen the same old Kog'Maw comp. We've seen the Caitlyn composition. Where is the adaptation? Where is the innovation? They are going, like, two steps back. And in reference to that play, I mean, the cast just called it out. In the early game composition, the onus was on Team WE, and here's Cloud9 in the bottom lane winning a straight-up 2v2. And I actually think this is an entire tournament trend. Look at every quarterfinals. The number one seed has always been complacent when it comes to the meta. They have never brought out anything new, whereas the number two seeds are always pushing the tempo. Samsung, Fnatic, 
misfits are always making the number one team bend to their will. Now Cloud9 have something new to prove, and it seems like the number two seeds just want it more. Now you get out to an early advantage like that in the bot lane, it makes the, uh, the, you know, the resulting team fights that much easier. Not just two minutes later, C9 with a five-man dive in the bot lane coming up big here in the team fight. It's also a super questionable teleport. Why TP to the ward instead of the tower here? It just puts 957 in a really awkward situation. He is in an awkward situation, but Cloud9 responds so well because normally you'd see teams commit to the dive, but they recognize that WE has read onto the play and they are going to respond. So they pull back and try to fight on their terms, just pick up whoever is closest. That is a play that I have not seen being done in a long time. That is very impressive to see Cloud9 pull off so cleanly on what could have been the game losing play. Focus fire on the isolated target there. Really good choices and they're able to collapse. Even though they flip out of the, you know, Jarvan knockup there, it doesn't matter because of the isolation and they're able to focus him down. And where we called out execution as, you know, the misfire and the blunders for C9 in game one, it seems that as the series is going on, they're getting cleaner and cleaner in their execution. A game ending in 25 minutes here for game three, an utter stop to some degree. And now the question of mentality comes into play when you are that number one seed and you're up against the wall and you have to react to what C9 is doing. The question is, do they even have a strategy or a playbook at this point? Or if it all goes out the window and at that point, what do you rely on? It's also the fact that Team WE, I don't think they've ever reverse sweep or come back from a deficit in a best of five. This is still a very inexperienced squad. Yes, they've been rebuilding for uh, two years now, but this is their first appearance on a world stage. MSI was their first ever appearance on an international event. Nine 7 is the guy that you need to look to. He's the oldest one on the team. He's considered kind of the, the mother figure. So he needs to ground them right now because otherwise it's a bunch of rookies. We're flip-flopping sides again. C9 back over to blue. Four game point. What are we talking about in terms of Team WE striking back on the red side? I actually think WE has to change their entire game plan for draft, but I don't think it's in them. This team has clearly skewed their priorities all tournament long with the AD carry. Picking Maokai jungle at this stage in the game, you, you're gone mad. I, I don't think W have it and Cloud9 is going to take it. I agree. I actually think WE are done. What? That, that was their chance to show innovation. Play flopper? <laughs> yeah. What is this? Mate, <laughs> WE, I said they don't need to, don't pick, first pick Janna. They do me one worse. They do the Caitlyn. They don't get the Janna. I just think they're done. <laughs> All right, now shoes are on my desk. I think I got it. <laughs> Colby, do you have anything to say here before Only we move on? Only that again? that is, is not this? technically a flip flop. Uh, that's a slipper. <laughs> All right, uh, we're losing our minds here as uh, Cloud9 are one win away from earning their spot in the semifinals. We'll see if Team WE can stop their momentum in game four after the break. Stay with us. You guys are crazy. <laughs> Gonna take one to throw him, make it two. Oh my god, that rupture yeah. was amazing! First blood, 957! That heal may save his life in the pressure, and the shield is get him! Sneaky gets a kill! They're gonna go for two! Mystic, no summoners left! Sneaky outplays them! Rocket jumps out of the way! Monster from China! Sensor! She ain't goes down to Sneaky! Connie's gonna go down as well! He can't rupture! Beast! Silence! Oh my god, impact! Saves his carry, but Sneaky still getting jumped up, makes his way out! Condi goes down, and the last chance Saloon is closing for WE! Nice. Big end. GG, my dudes. Nice. GG.